The new Insta360 GO Ultra has a secret feature. It's a really big deal and something many users, myself included, have been waiting for for quite some time on the GO series, but Insta360 forgot to tell anybody. And for some reason, nobody's even talking about this. What is it? Well, let me give you a couple of clues. It lets you do stuff like this, even like this, or even do something like this. Now, if you're thinking the new feature is Bluetooth audio, then you're close, but not quite there. It's much more than just Bluetooth audio. In fact, some, some people, people might say, say it's even, even twice, twice as good. good. So, did you figure it out yet? When I first saw the launch information about the new Go Ultra, I was really pleased to see that Insta360 had finally given us wireless microphone support on the Go series, even if, at least according to the product page, this was limited to just a few Bluetooth devices. But when I finally received my Go Ultra and started playing around with it, I was thrilled to discover that the wireless microphone support goes even further than that. That's right, as I'm sure you've guessed by now, the secret feature, or perhaps better said, undocumented feature about the Go Ultra is USB audio support. So you now have the option to use a wireless microphone connected either by Bluetooth or by using the dedicated receiver plugged into the USB port of your Go Ultra. So today we're going to take a look at both of those connectivity options. We'll take a brief look at how each one works, look at the advantages and disadvantages of each, and I'll share some of my initial findings in terms of which systems are compatible and which are not. So there's a lot to cover, so as usual, I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline. But first, an important disclosure, this Go Ultra was sent to me at no charge from Insta360, but only under the conditions that I would inform my audience and also that any video I produce would be my own work without any influence or input from Insta360, so they are seeing this video at the same time you are. As far as all the compatible microphone systems are concerned, all were purchased with my own money. And throughout this entire video, all of the opinions are my own. With all that said, let's get to it. So let's go through the process of connecting a compatible Bluetooth microphone to the Go Ultra. And as you can see, the example I am using is the DJI Mic 2. I have it powered on, but not currently connected. You can see the light is flashing blue. So all I need to do on my Go Ultra is go into the menu, scroll over to the Bluetooth option. Before I tap on that, I'm going to first place my Mic 2 transmitter into pairing mode by holding down the pairing button. You'll see that it starts flashing rapidly. And now I initiate the search. You can see it immediately finds my DJI Mic 2 and I tap on it. You heard the confirmation and you see microphone connected here. Also, you'll notice the light on the Mic 2 transmitter is now solid blue, showing that it is connected using Bluetooth. And if we go back out to the preview screen, you'll notice there is now a microphone icon at the top right here, and you'll also see the audio level bar at the top of the screen. Having connected these two, they will both remember the connection, so anytime they are both powered on and within range, they will automatically connect. Now, even though, of course, we have to use the action pod in order to create the initial connection, the connection itself is actually between the transmitter and the camera module. So I can even remove the camera module. And as you can see, my Bluetooth microphone is still connected. You can see the microphone icon is still here at the top of the screen and you continue to see the active audio level meter. And now that we have created the connection, we don't even need the action pod at all. So if I power off, and just power on the camera module. You hear the confirmation. You can also see the light on the mic too has turned blue. So now once again, we are connected even without the action pod. So the advantages of using a Bluetooth connected microphone are of course, it is extremely simple to set up. 
And once connected, all you need to do is power on the devices. They will automatically connect and the microphone works with or without the action part. As far as disadvantages are concerned, typically when using a microphone in its Bluetooth mode, the audio quality is lower. You typically have a limited range and the connection can be easily interrupted by obstructions. Also, when used as a Bluetooth microphone, typically you lose a lot of the more advanced features that are available when using a dedicated receiver. When it comes to compatibility for a Bluetooth connection, we have, of course, the DJI Mic 2, the DJI Mic Mini, Apple AirPods, at least of a newer generation. There are a couple of additional earbud products that I am not familiar with and do not own, so unfortunately I'm not able to verify those. And then, of course, there is Insta360's own Mic Air, now, at the time of producing this video, the mic air is not compatible, but we are assured from Insta360 that it will be compatible with a future firmware update. Connecting a receiver-based system is also very straightforward, and once again, we'll take the example of the DJI Mic 2. Here you can see I have my DJI Mic 2 receiver and two transmitters already connected. And as you can see, I have the USB-C connector in place. So all I need to do is simply plug it into the USB port. Once again, you can see that we have the microphone icon at the top of the screen indicating that a wireless microphone is connected. You can also see the audio level indicator and you can immediately see one of the key advantages of the receiver-based system is I have both microphones connected. There are other advantages of a receiver-based system, which includes typically much better audio quality than a Bluetooth microphone, as well as a much better range and signal stability. Also, depending on which system you are using, by using the receiver, you have access to all the various features and settings, which may include things like noise reduction, stereo or mono options, safety tracks, onboard recording, and so on. The main disadvantage of the receiver-based system compared to Bluetooth is that the connection is between the receiver and the action pod only. If I remove the camera module, You'll notice that we lose the microphone icon and the audio level, and the camera now just uses its onboard microphones. As soon as we place the camera back into the action pod, the microphone system is once again available. As far as USB audio compatibility is concerned, obviously I can only tell you about the systems that I own and have been able to test. So I was successfully able to connect the DJI Mic 2 system, also from DJI the Mic Mini system, the Hollyland Lark M2S system, the Boya Mini system, and even though as of the current date it is not yet compatible as a Bluetooth microphone, Insta360's own Mic Air is compatible when using the USB receiver. Now, one of my systems which currently does not appear to be compatible with the Go Ultra is the new Boya Magic system. When plugged in, you can see that the lights on the receiver are lit. You can also see the microphone icon at the top of the screen, as well as what appears to be a level meter. But you'll also notice that even when there is no sound, the level meter still shows a significant signal. And when I tested it outside, this is basically what I got. Okay, so I'm not looking to do a full-on comparison test here, but what I figured I would do is at least give you a sense of what you get with the two different connection types in terms of audio quality, range, and signal stability, and we're going to use the DJI Mic Mini in order to show that. 
Now, right now, you're listening to me over the onboard microphones of the Go Ultra, and as long as I stay pretty close to the camera, I'm sure that will be perfectly fine. The problem is, as soon as I move away from the camera, turn my back to the camera, that where the onboard microphones no longer do so well, and that's where we need the wireless microphone. So let's go ahead and hook up the DJI Mic Mini first using Bluetooth and see how it performs. Okay, and now I've switched over to the DJI Mic Mini connected to the Go Ultra using Bluetooth. How is the audio quality? How does it compare to the onboard microphones? Let's also take a walk and do a bit of range and stability testing. Okay, so this is around about 50 feet away from the camera. I'm sure as long as I maintain line of sight to the camera, you should be able to hear me without any difficulty. That may change, however, as I turn around and turn my back to the camera, are you still able to hear me okay? Are you noticing any signal interruptions? Let's try going a little bit further. So this is around about 100 feet away from the camera. We're kind of pushing the limits for a Bluetooth connection. But again, as long as I maintain line of sight, I think it should be okay. Let's see how that changes. If I turn around and turn my back to the camera, are you still able to hear me okay? Or are you noticing any signal dropouts? Let's try one more. And now probably around about 150 feet away from the camera. How is the audio quality at this range? Let's do our obstruction test and I'll turn around and turn my back to the camera. Are you still able to hear me okay or are you noticing any signal interruptions? Okay, enough with Bluetooth. Let's switch over to the receiver configuration and see how that compares. Okay, so now once again, I'm using the DJI Mic Mini, but this time instead of Bluetooth, it is connected to the dedicated receiver, which is plugged into the USB port of the Go Ultra. So how is the audio quality? How does it compare to the Bluetooth connection? Once again, let's take a walk and do a little bit of range and stability testing. Okay, once again, around about 50 feet using the DJI Mic Mini with its dedicated receiver plugged into the USB port. How is the audio quality at around about 50 feet? Let's do our obstruction test and turn around, turn my back to the camera. Are you noticing any signal interruptions or are you able to hear me just fine? Let's go a little further. Okay, and now 100 feet using the Mic Mini connected to the USB receiver. How is the audio quality at this range? Let's also do our obstruction test. I'm turning around with my back to the camera. Are you still able to hear me okay? Or are you noticing any signal interruptions? And now once again, at around about 150 feet away from the camera, are you still able to hear me okay? I am using the Mic Mini connected to the wireless receiver. Let's do our obstruction test one last time. I'm turning my back to the camera. Are you still able to hear me okay? Or are you noticing any signal interruptions? The wireless microphone support on the new Go Ultra is a welcome addition and the fact that you can select between a Bluetooth microphone and a receiver-based microphone gives you even more creative flexibility. Now clearly I can only test the systems that I have available to me. If you have a Go Ultra and you're able to pair it up with an additional microphone system, please add that information into the comments section. And also be on the lookout for several additional videos that I have planned all featuring the new Go Ultra. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to share your experience or make suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.